before I start this video, I want to give a shout out to all of the ones that supported this channel by way of gifts through PayPal and Cash App. I really appreciate that. It has not gone unnoticed and everything that you gave is going right back into this media platform either um, if it's not Spreaker, it's WordPress, uh, my websites, anything that I need to put this information out, that's what this money is used for. So I really appreciate you. And this is a big shout out to you and you know who you are. I want to title this video, The Jesus Agenda. The Jesus Agenda. I was sitting there thinking about all of these mandates that are placed upon American citizens, while at the same time the borders are wide open and there are no mandates required of the illegal immigrants that's crossing the border. People are losing their jobs, their livelihoods. Their health insurance has increased threefold because they refuse to submit to the mandate. But the thing that's, that stands out to me is that no one is protesting. If you think back under the last administration, throughout the entire term of that administration, there was no peace. People were angry. People were burning down businesses, was protesting all out in the street because of propaganda that was sent over the airs of the media. People were angry. Although the economy was doing well, although people were employed and there were more jo jobs than people that could fill them, and these were ge uh, genuine employment that was available. It wasn't like it was destroyed and then people walked off their jobs or people were fired or people for whatever reason, and then there's job available. These jobs were available. And instead, people refused those jobs. So now we're facing high gas prices. We're facing mandates. People have no more authority over their own bodies. But yet, there's no anger. There's no protesting. No one is blocking the road. It's quiet. Now people will complain on social media. They vent their frustrations and then we hear politicians on the news talk about how bad things are. But no one is doing anything about it. And people are not standing up for their rights. But it took my mind back to when Jesus or Yeshua was being crucified or before he was crucified. And he had to go through their court systems. Now I'm going to read something to you and I want to point something out that even I myself had not seen before. I saw it, but really didn't give much thought to it. Because in most cases, people in the church, they focus on him being crucified. But I want to read from the book of Luke, the 23rd chapter. Reading the 21st to the 33rd verse. And it reads as follows. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. 
And he said unto them the third time, Why? Now, this is the person that's in charge. This is Pilate. And the people are screaming and demanding that Yeshua be crucified. And Pilate asked the question, why? What evil has he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. My question is, why chastise him if there is no evil that he's done? and have found no cause of death in him, why chastise him? Why would you chastise an innocent man? The 23rd verse says, And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. Now the voices of the people prevail, not justice, but the voices of the people. And it reminds me of the last administration and how people were crying out that he might be, in a sense, crucified. And how they wanted the last administration to be out of office. The 24th verse says, And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required, as they required, not as justice, not as righteousness, but as they required. The 25th verse says, And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison. I'm going to read that again. Because... Keep in mind, he had just said that there was no fault in him. There was no evil in him. He found no fault in him. But then in the 25th verse, it says, And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison. Sounds like R. Kelly, doesn't it? Whom they had desired. Keep in mind, not for justice sake, but they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Syrian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Now, if we think about the last administration and how everybody was crucify him, crucify him, they was protesting, they were burning down buildings, they were attacking law enforcement, They were tearing down statues. Everything was racist. But then they started going after the supporters of the last administration. So when I read where Yeshua says, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. We're living in times now where our children are beginning to reap the rewards or the curses of the actions of their foreparents, the people of yesterday, the people of the last administration that was crying racism and xenophobe with Make America Great Again. As a result of that, 
now that another administration is in office, and I'm trying to be careful with my words on YouTube, now that another administration is in power, now our children are under attack. They've been out of school for over a year. And now they're trying to fix it so that they would have to submit to the mandate. So this is only the beginning of sorrow. This is the beginning of suffrage. This is the beginning of very troubled times, as the Bible predicted. But the crazy thing about this is this is what the people wanted. This is what they fought for. This is what they protest for. So now that people are suffering and losing their livelihoods, no one is crying out. So it's almost like you've accepted judgment or defeat or hard times. It's like you desire things to not be so well with you. It was as if when things were right and fair, you had an issue with that. So now that everything is now flipped and our rights are being stripped from us, you're quiet and content. So in essence, you were crying out, Crucify our rights. Crucify our health. Crucify all of the blessings that this country was known for. The reason why so many people across the globe is traveling miles, days, and weeks just to get to the border. But yet, we have people that are citizens that are screaming out and crying to crucify your rights, putting yourself and permitting yourself to go into bondage and captivity. It makes no sense to me. The 29th verse says, For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. In other words, those that are without children, it would be blessed for them. Blessed are the ones that are barren, the ones that can't conceive, and the womb that never gave birth. Because you don't know what or who you are bringing into this world. The 30th verse says, Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. If they do these things, in a green tree, what shall they what shall be done in the dry? In other words, if they do these things when things are good, what shall be done when things are bad? When you are suffering, when you are really suffering and without or lack for the better term. So for if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him 
to be put to death. The 33rd verse says, And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Did you catch that wisdom in there? Did you catch it? Something that you might not have heard in church or you might not have heard it put that way and brought to the modern days in which we now live. So many of us, by accepting this administration and the force mandates that's placed upon us, you in sense shouted and cried out to crucify your rights as a human being. And you've accepted, you've accepted judgment upon not just your head, but on the heads of your children. So feedback, tell me what you think. Subscribe. Until next time. I'm fearless.